Digital downloads were the way of the future. Many a music analyst predicted iTunes and other MP3 services to be the avenues that would dominate for years to come, but no one could have predicted the rate at which technology would advance. Downloads are nearly extinct at this point, quickly becoming more and more scoffed at as everyone's eyes have diverted elsewhere. What shook up the business model? What was the major player that record labels, fans, and critics all seemingly embraced as the solution to the growing demand for a quicker and cheaper way to consume music? Let's talk about streaming and how it ruined the music industry. Sort of. Still within the past decade, we've seen some huge feats from some of music's biggest stars when it comes to downloads and sales. Lady Gaga's infamous $3.99 price stunt for her album Born This Way in 2011 helped her secure hundreds of thousands of digital downloads first week, scoring more than a million sales overall. Flo Rida's hit song Right Round wowed with a pace-setting 636,000 first week downloads in 2008. Taylor Swift, Fun, Gautier, and Carly Rae Jepsen all saw huge success with singles in the early 2010s as well, but a little intruder known as Spotify was quietly gaining traction and dominance behind everyone's collective back. Spotify was founded in 2006 and initially did offer the option to buy and download tracks. This feature was discontinued in late 2009 as the company had its eyes set on streaming. As technology advanced in smartphones, tablets, and even computers, Spotify quickly jumped at the chance to get more people on their service with a lucrative price point and a growing demand to have more music directly at one's fingertips. It was revolutionary, and while they most certainly weren't the only players in the game, they were the ones making headlines. What isn't to love, right? You can listen to your favorite music wherever you want for free, albeit with ads, or you can pay 10 bucks a month to get unlimited ad-free listening to anything you could possibly think of. Hell, most of these Spotify-esque services let you download the songs for offline listening at that price point too. We the consumer feel completely justified in the fact that we're no longer scouring free mp3 sites to rip songs from our favorite bands and artists. We're paying for this, yeah? Why wouldn't that be okay? To be fair, it is okay. It would take an uprising against and abandonment of said streaming platforms in order for any real change to be made. But the problem isn't necessarily the consumer's fault, it's the industry itself. You've probably all heard by now that Apple Music, YouTube, and Spotify pay fractions of a cent per stream, but when you really get down to it, many small artists aren't making a damn thing off of their music. According to Digital Music News, YouTube pays the least fairly at around $1.50 per 1,000 streams, while Spotify pays roughly $7.50 and Apple Music $12 per 1,000. Once you do the math, you realize that on average, they're earning maybe six dollars to $10,000 per 1 million streams overall, depending on where the streams are coming from. Again, that might not sound bad, but considering how much of the music industry is still stuck in its old ways, you know that most of that money won't make it to the artists themselves. Record labels, managers, producers, songwriters, everyone has to get their fair share of the royalties. It's a bit backwards considering the talent are often living paycheck to paycheck, while the execs are finally starting to thrive as they've learned to gain the system in the streaming era. Streaming unintentionally set the system up to be rigged, and also for low-budget, low-effort music to rise to the top. Why have we seen an overabundance of genres like EDM, trap, and other forms of rap dominating the past few years? Because of the return on investment being so high. Record labels are scooping up viral-powered rappers left and right, desperate to cash in on their fame and making them multi-million dollar offers they can't refuse. Rap and electronic music can generally be made anywhere, anytime. As long as you've got a high-quality mic and a laptop, you can pretty much lay down the majority of a song like this quite easily. This era also unknowingly encourages laziness in the sense that labels saw where their cash cows were and subsequently started dropping bands that required time, studios, and multiple members in favor of more run-of-the-mill pop singers and rappers. One person to pay, little to no effort in terms of production, you can probably guess that they're gonna go with the cheaper option. It doesn't mean that this music is inherently bad. The problem is that there's little to no diversity on the charts anymore thanks to streaming. Rock, alternative, traditional country, and even pop are being pushed aside in favor of styles much easier to produce. 
A recent in-depth breakdown of earnings in the music industry was conducted by investment bank Citigroup, showing some truly scary figures. Well, scary especially if you're a musician or you actually care about musicians getting paid. Even though in America, people are spending more money than ever before on music, musician pay is at an all-time low. While the music industry reportedly made a whopping $43 billion in 2017, the bands and artists themselves only walked away with a mere $5 billion, aka 12% of the cut. 12%! Clearly, there are other alternatives for budding artists and bands in this modern age. You can self-release your music, you can pay to boost posts on social media without a label, and you can grow a fan base and tour and make money by hustling hard in those departments. The only problem with that? Streaming. Again. If it's possible for a much-hated artist such as Bad Baby to rise to the ranks of Superstar, all because she gained huge amounts of attention online, then literally anyone can do it. Streaming opened Hell's Gates on anyone being able to upload, signed or unsigned. In many ways, that is a great thing. Even places like Bandcamp and Reverb Nation offer a solution to the up-and-coming artist. But oversaturation of nearly every style and genre is what's killing the music industry right now. The online world demands more music faster, or else you'll be forgotten, so everyone struggles and competes to churn out music quickly in the form of singles, often leaving the beloved album format of yesterday behind. When albums are utilized, they're often padded with ludicrous amounts of material. For example, Drake's 25-song Scorpion earlier this year. Since the rise of streaming forced the hand of chart services such as Billboard to include streaming data in the formula, many take advantage of this fact and load up their albums with filler songs, since each stream will eventually count towards their overall first week quote-unquote sales. To simplify, this era has turned into an overpopulated free-for-all rat race of both talented and talentless musicians all chasing the same dreams of success. The industry is still resetting and learning how to make money via streaming and other avenues. And since they still haven't figured that out, it's hurting the fans' wallets in other ways. Have you noticed concert prices soaring? Blame streaming. Higher merch cost online and at shows? Thanks streaming. The starving artist is a familiar portrait that has been jokingly painted in the past, but now it's almost a sad reality that's setting in. The bands and the artists have to make their money somehow. Many musicians taste that viral success and want more. It's like a high that felt so incredible the first time, so they keep attempting to replicate it over and over before oftentimes fading into obscurity. It's a mean beast of an industry, and with more scrutiny than ever before placed on the world of music, many just simply can't compete or keep up. Show your favorite band or artist love in whatever way you can. Streaming is fine, it might not pay what downloads did, but it's still a little something. If you're into physical merchandise, buy the albums on CD or vinyl, it's fun to collect. Buy a shirt, go to a show, send a tweet thanking them for staying true to themselves and not taking the easy way out, especially if you see the hard work they put in. There will be a continued push towards self-reliance from the artists themselves over the next decade, and I really hope that the ability to directly connect with fans ends up changing the fate of the streaming era. Thank you for tuning into this video essay on streaming. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop a like on the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future uploads, and please support on Patreon if you're able to to help videos like this keep coming on both of my channels. There's another video essay directly below me if you'd like to watch that, or if you'd like to connect with me on social media, all of those links are down below. I'll see you soon for more on ARTV.